So Digby, when we broke, we were enjoying the idea that Evan Bayh is going to come back into the Senate, and it's like all his friends have graduated. I mean, graduated <laughs> on to lobbyist jobs, uh, and there's not going to be any Joe Lieberman around. I mean, he'll try and make some common cause with folks like, I don't know, maybe Joe uh, Manchin, Joe right. Manchin, maybe John Tester on some issues, but. The, the, you know, he's not, you know, they're, they don't, they're not, they're no Joe Liebermans in terms of the way that buy. So it's going to be sort of fascinating. There's a lot of speculation that the reason why buy is coming back after giving a very self-righteous speech upon his exit about how he wanted to become a professor and he didn't like the, how corrupt the Senate had become. And then he went on to become a, uh, a, a, uh, a lobbyist, <laughs> corporate lobbyist. That he's coming back simply because he doesn't have any friends in the Senate anymore, and he needs to make more friends so he can go back out and make more money. Right. I heard somebody mention that that's exactly what Dan Coats did, also from the same state, right? Um, that he was the Republican who le- who was in the Senate, left, become a lobbyist, and then when all his friends retired or were voted out, had to go back in the Senate to make new friends so he could leave again and become a lobbyist. Um, talk about the revolving door. I mean, that that just illustrates it perfectly. I mean, I'll be very interested to see how By handles this because you know he's a, he's one. I don't think uh, I do not believe Evan By has any principles whatsoever. I think he has none. I think he's absolutely just sort of run purely on a on the basis of some self interest, whether it's electoral or or you know financial. Um, to see how somebody like him deals with this new uh, sort of dominance or I shouldn't say dominance, but at least power within the Democratic Party uh, among among much more progressives. Because when he left, he was like one of those guys you had to go and suck up to him and, you know, beg him and cajole him. And then he'd come out and write an op-ed about how, oh, you know, we can't really do that because it would, you know, hurt the tax base or whatever. You know, I mean, he was really one of those horrible, no labels, fix the debt centrists who just, was insufferable. There were a whole, there used to be a whole bunch of them, like Dan Boren and you know various other ones over the years that were basically just they they saw, they looked in the mirror every morning and they saw a future president and so they really right. you know demanded a lot of fealty to their very special ideas. Uh, most of them are gone now. I mean, we just don't have a lot of those people again, thanks to the progressives who you know worked hard to make that happen. Those guys are no longer finding the Senate a fun place to be, so they leave. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how Evan Bayh does when, when he comes back into this new environment. If I were to guess, I would say he's going to be more progressive. That would be my yeah, guess. I would imagine. And uh, still, I imagine he will also strategically put himself in a position to be a deciding vote on a bunch of different things if he has the ability oh, to do God. it. I mean, oh, God. But let's hope, let's let's, hope Schumer is too smart to let him do that, although I don't know. He'll probably put him in banking, so he'll take care of Schumer's constituency. Indeed. I mean, that's the thing is that Schumer, I have a feeling, is also looking around for any yep. type of allies he can find at this at this uh, stage, because I think there is uh, definitely a sense that Schumer is going to be more at odds with his uh, caucus than uh, I think he would have ever anticipated yep, I agree. on a lot of issues.